Hello and welcome to a slightly different type of video. It's cold, wet, windy and a bit icy outside and frankly I'm feeling rather under the weather. But I'm killing two birds with one stone. You see I am relaxing, treating myself to one of my favourite computer games. But I'm also uh, taking the opportunity to share with you an archaeological demonstration. That is to say, I'm using the computer game Skyrim to talk a little bit about an archaeological principle. Now, many of you will love Skyrim, I'm sure. And where are we today? Well, we are just here. We're just next to the city of Whiterun. Now, Whiterun, for those of you who don't know, is very much one of these stereotypical Saxon Viking sort of visions of grandeur. There's a great hall on a hill, a uh, little, little bit like in Beowulf or in, uh, for example, Lord of the Rings, these places where a king rules from, with a city down at the bottom of the hill surrounding it. So the hall on the hill is just there, and here we have the city of Whiteland. Now we're going to approach this town or city uh, along this path, and I want to talk today about a phenomenological principle. Now, phenomenology is a philosophy. It's all about how things are revealed to you through your experience of them. Uh, it's used by archaeologists to try and understand sites both today and as they might have been in the past, and to talk about them, in the, I suppose, using language of experience as opposed to language of uh, simple facts about something being here or there. It's, it's not so much... Um, a geographical endeavour, that is that mapping out where things are, rather it's a bit more like a human endeavour, it's a bit more like feeling and understanding what the feeling of a place might be, or the intended feeling of a place might be, based on the experience of it. We have talked about phenomenology in the past, and actually what I do, will do is put a link to a video all about that in the description below. Anyway, here we are at the entrance to White Run. There's a stable outside and also a nice pub, but ultimately the whole town is walled and very much defensive. You get that sense. It's quite obvious that this will, wouldn't be an easy place to attack. Indeed, earlier in the game, just here, we can see where there was actually an attack on the city, a siege. We can see some of the siege works here, spikes in the ground and this collapsed uh, watchtower. So the place has been attacked and it's still standing. And it's still standing probably because of these lovely stone walls here, which look somewhat ruined, but nonetheless they are still serviceable. They have wooden structures on top watching you. And that's the over overarching, I suppose, phenomenology of this particular site. You get a real sense of power, of military control, and that you're entering a space which, well, if you're not as uh, welcome, then you're probably going to be in trouble. Um, or at the very least, you're going to be watched. So, as we approach, we see banners on each side of the gate telling you that this is White Run, the Jarl's uh, banners. And as we go through the stone gateway up the path, straight ahead there's a watchtower. People are watching you. This is a militarily controlled space. Across the, uh, the little brook here, more stone walls, more banners. And as we continue up the path and around the corner, we come to a second gate. Again, this reinforces that sense of control. A controlled space, a space where you, again, if you're not welcome, you're probably likely to be in trouble. We continue up to the entrance of White Run itself. So this is, I suppose, the phenomenology of the entrance to White Run, or at least from one uh, particular approach. This particular approach give you a, gives you a sense of power and of control and again, as I say, a sort of a militaristic um, environment. It's not an everyday situation and it's also designed to impress you and impress things upon you. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to leave White Run again, or rather leave the, this entrance way to White Run, and we're going to approach it from a slightly different angle. So I'm going to be, be a little bit cheeky. Instead of using the gates, I'm going to jump down here. There we go. And we go head off into the tundra moorland type landscape. Now, I love this game, and uh, so does, for example, Liv and many other archaeologists that I know. Not least because of the beautiful landscape. It's just epic in almost every sense of the word. And I could, I could talk about that, um, but I'm not going to. What I'm going to do is keep on running over here, 
around the side of Whiterun. So there we see, there's the hall up on the hill and the walled city again. Still, have, it gives that sense of, of, uh, of power. It's in a prominent position in the landscape in this relatively flat space surrounded by mountains. The, uh, the hall and the city are very much present. But uh, what we're going to do is we're going to approach Whiterun from here. So we're going to head this way. This is not, I suppose, the intended approach to the city. This is uh, approaching it from the opposite direction. Now I'm going up here. Up I go. Oh, see, there's the wall of the city. Yep, still very much militaristic, still very much impregnable. Get that sense of, uh, of, of uh, an attacking force being overwhelmed, possibly. But, oh, hang on. I've just wandered into the into part of the defensive works here. What? What's going on? And from here, well, I'm basically in the town. I'm in that walkway. There's none of that uh, impressive gateway. There's none of that being watched. There's none of that controlled uh, approach. You see, I can do it again if I head over here. It doesn't even look as though you're heading towards a, a, a walled city. And suddenly, you're within the confines of Whiterun, or certainly the approach to Whiterun. So, what does this tell us? Well, it tells us that this whole section here, everything, possibly with the exception of this gateway and what's through that gateway, or rather through in that space there, beyond the gateway, all this is just for show. This is designed to be seen and designed to make an impression upon you because it's actually a bit of, of a facade. All you need to do is jump a little bit over here and you're in the moorland. It's very easy to get into this section of the defences of Whiterun. In other words, uh, th this whole section is just designed to show off. It's designed to, I don't know, give, give visitors a sense that they're approaching something important and impressive and that they best be on their best behaviour. But really, this is a pantomime in terms of the defences of Whiterun. This is the beauty of phenomenology. By analysing the location of something in the landscape and the surrounding area, we can better understand its true purpose. What on the surface looks like a, a military installation and probably designed to be well defended and defendable is in fact here for show. It's here to make an impression on people. It's not really here uh, to be a, 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 a real military asset. And this is actually something that we see when we look at, say, Iron Age sites in Britain. Quite often, what look from one angle like a military approach, a gateway, somewhere to be defended, from another angle can be very easily simply walked onto and walked out of. It's all about making an impression. And this is one of the reasons I love phenomenology. It tells us something more than just the fact of a site. It tells us something about the intended use of the site. White Run, as much as it is a very impressive place, and the city itself is in fact well guarded, White Run is also trying to, I don't know, how can we put this? It's trying to project an image of a city which has a far grander entrance, for example, than it does in, in reality. It's trying to be bigger than it actually is. So there you go folks, we use the computer game to talk about phenomenology and the importance of considering uh, the, I suppose, the intended impact of a site, not just what it is that we find on that site. Hopefully this video has been interesting and as I say I will leave a link to our video on phenomenology below if you want to hear more about this principle. Uh, but I quite enjoyed using a computer game uh, to talk about this concept and if you want to see uh, more such demonstrations in the future uh, just let me know below. I'm, I'm really interested in, in exploring other ways of talking about this stuff and I suppose encouraging people to think about computer games in slightly different ways. This is uh, yeah, it's, it's a bit of an experiment and hopefully you've enjoyed it. As ever, until next time, do take care. Bye bye.